Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean Wildermuth. If you've been watching these videos or just a couple of my videos, I might suggest that you subscribe because I have some really interesting content coming up. I'm going to be doing a short series on .NET Aspire as well as some JavaScript and TypeScript topics that are coming up out of some of my work with Vue. So if you want to be notified, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And on to today's topic. I use Tailwind for a lot of my JavaScript and TypeScript projects, and I really like it. I like the way it works. But I do want something that might help me with basic sort of styling in a theming sort of way. Now, I could write it if I was running one company, I might have our organization work with a design firm to create a style and a theme for all of our project. But in the case you're not doing that, you might want to use some libraries that layer on top of Tailwind. They use Tailwind and can expand on Tailwind to support some really interesting roles and better form inputs and things like that. And there's a bunch of these out there. The one I've currently fallen in love with is Daisy UI. And I like it because Daisy UI is just open source. It doesn't require a license, doesn't hide half of the library behind some paywall. It is what it is. It's not the most complete. It's not the most fanciful, but it really helps me build applications that have a good look comes with, I think, 18 or 19 different themes. And these themes aren't just changing colors, but really the way that things are rendered. And I've become a big fan of it. So today I'm gonna to show you how to add it to a project. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start with this very simple project. And I have it running here. It's just going after some data, allows us to look at different customers probably seen something like it in my examples before. It's a, just a simple view app that works in the way we want to. It has a contact page, and this is all just Tailwind at this point. I've added a lot of styles to make some of these really simple things work, but it doesn't have a lot of polish. It feels a little rough, frankly. And so I want to opt into something called Daisy UI, and I can install it by just saying install Daisy UI, and I'm going to save it as a development dependency. And this is important because it's a plugin into Tailwind, not into Vue, not into React, but a into Tailwind. That means it's going to do the same sort of tree shaking for CSS that Tailwind does and generate classes in a CSS. This is just more classes that you can use. Once we've installed it into our project, we're also going to need to go into our Tailwind config. And we're just going to add it here in plugins. We can just say require Daisy UI. Now with that installed, we come back here and nothing has changed because we haven't opted into any of the new classes that it supports. And so that's an important idea here is that you're only going to use what of Daisy UI you actually want to use. So back here, I'm going to start by just looking at our app.view. This is a top level view that hosts everything else. And this header section is that section on the top that has the logo and then the two buttons on the right hand side. And I want to change this a little. I'm using gray here. But I also could use something called base. They have base one, two, and three as three standard base colors. We're using these mostly if we want to use the different theme colors that they're going to have in their themes. And this will change as you change a theme. And we'll get to adding the theme a little later. And we're going to want to do sort of that same thing here. But instead of saying text white, we're going to say BG text base content. And so content and these three colors are going to give you a contrast. So if the back is light, the base content will be dark. If the base is dark, content will be light. Don't need to stick to these. You don't need to use them at all. But this is one of the things that they sort of support when they want to talk about being able to do theming. And we can see here that in my router links, I'm just using three states to design this simple button. We look here, I just have some hover states and it's pretty simple. But one of the things that comes with Daisy are our actual button classes. So button, BTN, and then I'm going to choose a style of button called ghost. The ghost is sort of special because it's purposely just looks like a link until you hover over it. It's a style. There are other buttons we're going to use later that are going to change that style. And so I'm going to copy both of these into here. And the idea here is to create as much as we can a consistent look and feel. And so now in the container where we're hosting all of our views, I'm also going to pick base 200. So we have a different color there, and I'll do the same here with text base content. So if we come back here, we're getting these two very dull grays, and that's what it is outside the box. It's a dark theme, and you're going to see some of this natural interplay of how it changes. And so if we go ahead and go down to one of our pages, and I'll just use our index page in this case. Again, we're not touching any of the code in here because the code's going to continue to work the way it's going to work. So I have this new customer button that I really haven't styled. And what it's not going to do here is 
apply a style to everything called a button or an input. It's really going to rely on these helper classes to have you opt into using the styling. So just like we did before, I'm going to create a class here for button, but I'm going to use button primary. And the idea of sort of primary, secondary, tertiary, those sorts of names, as well as warning and some others, might ring of something like bootstrap. And this is exactly the idea here. Again, you can opt into using these or you can opt out of using these ever. So now we can see we have this big purple button that really represents a button for the new customer, but it's a little garish. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say button small. So we have a nice small version of it, and that's a little better. And our whole bar here, I'm just going to add a padding bottom of one just to give us a little bit more room it's no longer touching gives us what we want and all of this continues to work in kind of the way we want so these are interesting these are all actually buttons and this might not be what we want we would like to have something that's more consistent here and so let's come down here to where i have the menu item and items and what i actually want to do here is change this to a unordered list and to change all of these to actually lists the button that's inside of here might be interesting and I'm just going to make this unordered list with the type called menu. And this can be for short drop down menus, but I'm, we're going to use it to sort of have a side menu. And then instead of a button here, I'm actually going to create it as an href. And I'm just going to change this click to prevent so that I can use these as links because you don't want any of the styling of the button by default. I'm going to get rid of all of these styles. Because we're using the menu here, all the list items with an anchor in them are going to get a consistent look and feel. We can see that now that we have this group down here and we can see that it's using the ghost button sort of as the default style. And this is a good time to think about how themes work. So we come back up to our app.view. A few ways to define the theme, but the easiest way is to actually use a data theme at the top sort of level of your application. And I'm going to use a theme called business. Because it only ships with one theme by default, we actually have to go down to our tailwind and make one more change. You can see that the tailwind default here has different options, but there's actually a way you can put in a Daisy UI element into the tailwind, and it's going to use this to get some information. And so we're going to say themes as an array, and I'm going to put dark lights because i might want to support them changing these in business we're not actually going to show switching between these but we'll do it with the data element make sure that colon is there now if we come back here we might notice that the rounded corners are all gone and the colors are a little different because that the business theme is a very simple theme but if we change our theme to let's say light we get the same experience. Everything should continue to work, but we're now getting it in a different theme. A lot of changes between themes. And in fact, if we go ahead and open UI, you'll see that there's this themes section in the documentation. It shows you a bunch of these themes. One of the things I like is when I'm trying to build something quickly where I just want something to work, I might want to test these out. Instead of including them all and switching it back and forth, you can actually just click these and let's say Aqua, and it'll change the theme of the actual Daisy UI docs, so you can see, oh, this is has a little rounded, which I don't really love. Maybe a lemonade one. Oh, that's very positive, and I'm not sure I can live with that. Maybe coffee is my thing. And these names are ones you can just go ahead and include in these themes, and they will embed them. Now, you could include all the themes if you want to give them every theme to create. And what this essentially does is take the classes that you're using and make sure there's a theme version of each of those classes. So by supporting more themes, obviously you're going to get a bigger CSS file. So use it sparingly. I usually only have one or two themes, a light and a dark version of my applications and some way to switch them. So we go back to our app. One of the things you'll notice that might be, not be super clear is that this projects table now has a more consistent look and feel because it was themselves have a consistent style. If we go back here and I'm actually going to change the theme back to business. I know it's dark, but it's nice and crisp. I, I kind of like it. And so here we can see, if we go back to our index page, you'll see this little section that has all this information. And the reason our table looks the way it does is that we're using a class from Tailwind called Table and Table Fixed, and it has overridden these styles to give you a consistent style. So if we do Table Auto instead, it's going to give you this pretty consistent look and feel to our table. Now, of course, at the bottom here, our buttons just look awful. So let's go ahead and give them classes for button. And let's say button accent, which is one of the colors. And then for delete, let's make it button warning. So 
we come back here, ooh, that's really big. And I'd like these to look a little bit more cohesive with each other. And one of the interesting things is that we can actually just create a class here and say join and add another called join item to each item that we want to have joined here. So instead of having a button bar, this is gonna to apply to anything that you want to sort of join into an atomic unit. Now we can see it's a consistent block. If the corners were curved, it'd be a little more obvious, but we can see it. And of course those are so big. So let's go ahead and add button extra small on these as well. And one of the things you'll notice in some of these naming is that it's using the consistent naming of extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, etc. for a lot of their elements, as well as the same numbering systems. And so you don't have to learn anything but some of the base classes that apply to different kinds of elements. And so now we have a pretty interesting looking table here. There's some probably more room than I'd like, and but it now looks pretty much like what I'd want it to look like. And so if we click on new customer, we get this form and you can see it is not styled at all. It's just using a really simple default styling in here and cancel and save. And so let's go ahead and find that modal and let's make it look a lot better. I have my modal dialog down here called the dialog directly here at the bottom of the page. You could have it anywhere you want. So I'm gonna tell the dialog that I want it to be modal. And then I have a few different pieces here. So in this one, I'm, I'm actually gonna say modal box. I'm gonna leave all those the way they are right now. And then ne down here near the bottom, I'm actually gonna say modal action. So we haven't changed anything about the form yet. We've just used some classes that make modals look a little better. If we come back here, we can see that we have some good letting, we have some good style. It's giving us a, a pretty good sized form to use these with. Now we can go ahead and style some of these. So of course, button is gonna be pretty simple. Class equals button, button info. And then I'm gonna do the same for the save. I'll just say button and button success, which is another color. We have big, beautiful, save buttons and we have all these controls. For me, one of the things I really like about it is that it does support form elements in a pretty easy way to style them across the different themes as well. And to do this, I'm actually gonna create a style section down here because I'm just gonna style my form in the way I want it to. And I don't need to add these and everything. So I'm gonna use selectors like input, label. And lastly, I'm gonna add a select. So I'm just gonna use the add apply here, which is gonna be fine because these are all tailwind classes, of course. And I'm just gonna say input, input bordered, because that's the style I want. There's a few different input styles. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the selects, except it's select and select border. And you might be surprised that we're not gonna use bordered here, but we are gonna tell it that it is a label and we're gonna say that the label is text. So these are all out of Daisy, and that should get us a much better looking form. Of course, it's now too big to fit on a page. We might wanna make things a little smaller, but now we have a consistent look for all the different controls on our particular page. Finally, I wanna show you that we have this little div that shows save when we save it. In fact, we create a new customer and this actually isn't doing any data. So when I do that, I get this little save down here. as something like a toast message. What you can actually do is make this a toast and I'll say toast and I'm going to remove all of these other classes because this was me trying to get a standard toast look and around this I'm going to create a div and I'm going to use their alert class alert success now we still need the logic around showing it or hiding it which we already have built on the page and this is much more about how it looks than how it acts so if we go back here we can see it looks a lot more like a toast that is styled with the rest of the website. It's a lot more options here. If you look at the docs, you can see there's quite a lot of different sorts of controls you may need. So I like them quite a lot for adding just enough of style so that I can create a consistent UI without having to go and write brand new CSS each and every time. So where does that leave us? This is one among a handful of really good component Tailwind extensions or plugins. And so it really doesn't matter whether you use Daisy or one of the others or your handcrafting. I just wanted to show you one that's really easy to use, doesn't try to do too much, and doesn't come with a lot of JavaScript to weigh it down. This is all just CSS and all just classes that apply during tailwind building of the CSS. That's one of the reasons I really like it. If you have a UI library like this, 
please go ahead and down in the comments, tell me why you think it's better than Daisy UI and why I might want to take a look at it as well. Be curious what people are using across different projects. But this is one I think is really, really easy to use and has very little barriers to entry. If you've gotten this far, don't forget coming up, I have some content on Aspire as well as some JavaScript frameworks that are coming in, some stuff about the new Vue stuff as well as the new Vite stuff that I think I'm quite excited about. I will get to talking about Tailwind 4 soon, but it's just an alpha, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself. And if you want to see any of these videos, it might be helpful to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. That way you'll get notified about them. And of course, a like is always always well. This has been Sean Wildermuth for Coding Shorts. I'll see you next time.